Let me welcome everybody. Uh, this is our, our first of uh, hopefully several, but we're going to do two this this week, but uh, an opportunity for us to do um, some live chat with our students uh, and our uh, prospective students and anybody really across the district. So welcome uh, to all of you and thank you for, for joining today. Um, our We do have a great a great list of panelists, which I'll share here in a, bit, in a minute. Uh, my name is Dr. Michael Anthony. I'm going to kind of get right into it. Let me share mine with you all. I kind of get into what's going on. So um, we're going to have a group of panelists today to address uh, several questions that you have submitted as students uh, and as other uh, folks who are thinking about coming to Prairie State. Um, we want to give some general information also about how the offices are supporting you. Um, so you can see a list of uh, folks who will be speaking today about academic classroom and community resources. Um, if you have additional questions that are not answered, um, please, as always, email stayinformed at prairiestate.edu. You should see that email address on your screen, stayinformed at prairiestate.edu, and we'll get back to you very quickly. Um, so to kick off our welcome and just to say hello to you all, let me stop doing this here. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, I don't think you saw the screen, did you? Let me make sure you get this. Um... Okay, there we go. So there's the email address for you there. Uh, we have a list of panelists that'll be popping up here soon, which I'll share with you here to talk about academic classroom and community resources. And to kick us off today, I wanna turn the screen over to uh, Dr. Thomas Sabin. And Tom Sabin is our interim president uh, he will be followed then by our interim vice president for academic affairs, Elijah Wilson. And they'll talk a little bit about the fall uh, and the spring, excuse me, the summer in the fall, and a little bit about uh, what we can expect and also just bring greetings to you all. So Dr. Saban, I'll turn it over to you. Oh, thank you so much, Dr. Anthony. It's, I'm so pleased to be a part of this institution. Yes, as we go through this challenging time, however, we can make this transition for students easier. We, uh, you'll hear today how, about how you may be able to uh, get registered more easily and uh, uh, many of the panelists uh, care deeply about your success and we want to, we do provide the resources that you need to make you uh, a graduate or to allow you to complete or allow you to uh, transition to whatever career you want. Uh, we are following the governor's uh, instructions about uh, state guidelines regarding group uh, gatherings uh, and stay-at-home orders. Uh, summer will be uh, an online program. Uh, uh, fall will uh, also be, uh, for the most part, online, but we're going to see how things work. But our biggest uh, uh, emphasis is students and success and making sure that uh, you have students, the resources you need to complete here at Prairie State College, and thank you, Michael. And the next, uh, the next speaker today will be Vice President Elijah Wilson. Elijah, please. I All right. Good afternoon, students, <laughs> and and again, welcome to this important town hall event. Um, I am Elijah Wilson, uh, effective June first, the interim Vice President of Academic Affairs. And I just want to, you know, just say how happy I am to spend a few minutes this afternoon talking with you about what you can expect from your education um, at Prairie State College this summer and beyond. So first, let me give you a preview uh, for the summer. As Dr. Sabin uh, already mentioned, all summer classes will be taught via an online learning format um, this summer. Our faculty are currently exploring, you know, ways to enhance the learning experience in all of our, you know, courses this summer, but particularly in those uh, lab oriented classes. You know, so if you're in a biology class, do you get to do a virtual dissection? What do we do with chemistry? We're exploring options for how we might be able to teach some of our, you know, our lab oriented classes. Um, in our uh, career tech programs, such as welding and automotive. Um, as you can imagine, at colleges all like, you know, colleges all across the state, like us, are, you know, really, really working hard to uh, find ways 
to enhance your online learning experiences. For those students in healthcare programs, the faculty will be communicating with you regarding testing. Uh, for those of you who are interested, I know it was a question about, will we have a nursing program? Yes, we're going to have a nursing program. And the faculty will communicate with you regarding testing. And for those students who are not able to finish up their clinical experiences, as soon as we get guidelines from the IDPH, CDC, and our accrediting organizations, faculty will reach out to you about completing those experiences as well. But let me give you two very good reasons for why taking summer classes at PSC can make this a smarter summer for you. First, let's talk about affordability. You'll save hundreds of dollars compared to taking summer classes through a four-year school. And second, let's talk about advancement. You'll add credits and get ahead so you'll be well prepared for the upcoming fall semester. Just remember, at PSC, we do it all for you. While we don't know for sure what the fall semester is going to look like, here are some options that the academic affairs team and all that everybody at the college um, has been exploring. The first option is all virtual, which would be a continuation of what we're doing right now. There might be some online, some face-to-face -face courses, but of course, face-to-face -face classes are going to depend upon guidelines from the governor, from our governing bodies, the Illinois Community College Board, as well as the CDC and the IDPH, Illinois Department of Public Health. We are also thinking about eight-week options to enhance your flexibility uh, in terms of when you take classes as students. So we might have classes in the first eight weeks, second eight weeks. So you could take one or two classes in the first eight weeks, take a, you know, and take one or two classes or more in the second eight weeks. But one of the things that's going to help us in making that decision is that we uh, in academic affairs and uh, has been, you know, we've been conducting focus group interviews with our faculty to find out what's working, not only for them, but for you, what's not working. And I want to encourage all of you students to check your email for the email link about the student survey, where there are specific questions uh, focused on um, asking you about your learning experiences during this virtual environment. We really want feedback from the students to guide us in our decision making moving forward. Let's face it. No one knows whether any of us are going to be back on campus in the fall. It may be that the college experience is much the same as it has been this spring. But rest assured, we are continuing to work each and every day to maintain the quality of education you've come to expect from Prairie State College. And PSC may just be the safest, the most convenient, and the most affordable option for you or those you love this summer and fall. Thank you. It's been my pleasure talking with you this afternoon. That is wonderful. Thank you so much, VP Wilson. Um, uh, and you could not have said it better. Uh, the, the community college here in your community across the district in the Southland is, is one of your best bets, um, even during the best of times, but certainly uh, during this pandemic. We have another uh, special welcome I want to make sure we hear from, and that is our student trustee, your student trustee, uh, a woman who's been serving you on the Board of Trustees uh, faithfully all year as she ends her term and is looking to, to finish her academic career out at Prairie State as well. Uh, and so Trustee Valdivia, uh, <laughs> she's smiling there, I see her. We'd love to just hear some words of welcome or any kind of encouragement you have for other students and, uh, and then we'll get into some of the panel. Okay, um, is my mic working or not? Can everyone hear me? Okay, cool. Okay, um, well, hi, as you guys know, my name's Talia. I'm the student trustee of the school. And I guess my words to say is that one, I'm really sad about leaving Prairie State because I remember when I graduated high school, I really, it wasn't in my options to go to community college. And then when I ended up coming here, I, decided to get involved and I became really close to like my school and my community in general. 
So I know it's been like really upsetting for me, the fact that I can't be on campus for my last semester. And I really wish I still could be there and see like people like Helen and Jenica and you know, all of you. But you know, we're trying to make it work. And I've been reaching out to a lot of students lately and every social media and telling them, if you guys have any trouble, don't hesitate to contact me. And I know that this may be like a really tough time for some of us, but us as like Prairie State, as like leaders, we're trying to help you guys in any way we can, along with the foundation, which ha they have also helped me and my close friends in like multiple ways. I can't even thank them enough for it. So if there's anything you guys need, I'm still, my term's still happening. So, you know, don't hesitate to contact me. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. I, if you can't tell already, you know, you'll you'll be missed. Um, uh, you've been one of the best trustees I've ever had an opportunity to work with. Uh, of course, our chair of the board is also on the call and um, he's been also the best. I have to say that as well. Mark, that's for you. Um, so <laughs> so uh, thank you, uh, Talia. You have been a, a gift to the college and we thank you so, so much. Um, so now let's get into some of the, the meat uh, of, of the, the session. So uh, let's invite our first uh, speakers to talk a little bit about the very important resources. The reason we, we're putting her first here too uh, is Counselor Shannon Word and, and uh, another counselor, transfer counselor, uh, Sarah Hine, to talk a little bit about uh, important community resources and other resources that are important. And then we'll talk a little bit about transfer as well. So I will turn it over. Shannon, I see you there. Take it away. Hi, can you all hear me? Can you see me? You. Okay, and you can see me good? All right. <laughs> well, I am so happy to be here. Hello, students. Uh, these are some tough times that we are going through right now. Uh, so let me talk about the services that I provide here. Uh, I am Shannon Word, and I am the personal counselor. And the reason why the title personal the word personal is in my title is because I address whatever personal problems you all have. Guess what college uh, research says about college students? Research says that 85% of college students are overwhelmed, 85%. So that's pretty much everybody. So if you feel overwhelmed, you can talk to me. So these are some of the common issues that I address with students, adjustment issues. That's pretty big right there. Uh, students come to college and it's new to them. They don't know how to adapt to it. So that's pretty big right there. Depression. Are you feeling sad? Do you have feelings of hopelessness? Anxiety, that's common as well. Do you worry a lot? Is it hard for you to, to find rest, peace of mind, low self-esteem? Do you have a negative viewpoint of yourself? Do you find yourself to be unworthy? Oh, family conflict. Parents, parents, parents. Oh my gosh. You're 19 years old, but they're still treating you like you're seven years old, wanting you to go to bed at eight o'clock. <laughs> so there's that conflict right there. Another one is unhealthy relationships, uh, very common. Uh, sad to say, students do experience abusive relationships. Uh, there's infidelity, patterns of being manipulated. So you can come and talk to me about that. Uh, another issue too is lack of resources. So it's not just therapy that I do. If you find yourself lacking uh, food in the household, you can't pay your utilities, uh, you don't have enough for clothing, come and talk to me about that. Now, no, I can't you know, buy you food. I can't you know, dip into my pocket and do that. But guess what? I can refer you to places in the community who can help you. Uh, and it's not just for basic needs either. You know, whatever you need, I've helped students locate daycare, uh, apartments, um, even with legal assistance. You know, you may find yourself in a custody battle or somebody may want to sue you. So you can just talk to me about anything that you need and I will do the research and locate that for you. Uh, another thing, I'm a big supporter of you all academically. One of the things that I do that's really popular, I do time management study schedules. Now you may ask yourself, what is that? A lot of students have a hard time trying to figure out how much time they should devote to studying. 
So you can come and talk to me about that and I can develop a comprehensive study schedule for you. And I mean, it is really holistic where it has the time that you should wake up, eat, walk the dog, get ready for work. And last but not least, to study. There is a magic rule as to how much time per week you should study. Do you all know what it is? Let me hear. I hear no's in the audience. Let me tell you. <laughs> you multiply the number of credits that you're registered in times two or three, and that's how many hours per week you should study. And guess what? You can do it. So come and see me, email me, and I can create that study schedule for you. It's really popular. I have one student tell me that it's dope. So if you want a dope study schedule, contact me, okay? <laughs> so, um, Another thing I do too with academic support, I address test anxiety. Test anxiety is huge. You do all of that work studying for your exam, you get there the day of the exam, the professor puts that exam in front of you and your mind goes blank, just like that white sheet of paper. So I give students test anxiety reduction tips. So please come and see me for that. Also, there's stress management. You know, I teach organization tips, you know, how to reduce that stress and become more organized so that way you'll be more efficient with uh, studying for your exams and doing your assignments. And lastly, students, I want to talk to you all about giving yourself some good old fashioned self care during this pandemic right now. One of the biggest issues that I'm working with students, they're having um, issues with trying to adjust with this new life of being quarantined. Well, you know what? The same life you had before, try to incorporate it now in the home. And you can pretty much do anything with YouTube. You can exercise, find new hobbies, whatever your interests are, you can do that through YouTube. Give yourself time at the spa, your home spa. <laughs> So I am so grateful to have had this time to talk to you all. If you want to schedule an appointment to meet with me, uh, S word, S W O R D at prairie state.edu, or you can go to the college's webpage, uh, just type counseling in the window box and my webpage will appear with my contact information. Thank you so much. That is awesome. That is awesome. so much council work. Um, Sarah Hine, our, our transfer counselor, are you on the call? I am. Call and about transfer. Excellent. Oh, Sarah, we can hear you well. Okay, good. Uh, so another way that we can manage the stress and the anxiety and the unknowns that we're dealing with now is to stay focused and moving forward with what we do know. What I know is that the world needs well-educated and well-trained people. It needs you in Prairie State we can help you get there. So I'm gonna talk about some resources. My focus is on working with universities and helping you go on for your bachelor's degree. I'm gonna talk about resources that you are still able to access uh, at, at, during this virtual time to go on for your bachelor's degree. The links to everything I'm talking about was sent in an email to all students by the PSC announcements email last week on April 29th. So if you keep your emails, it's waiting there for you. If you delete them, that's totally okay. Email me and I'll send it to you. And we can also talk more. So first off, graduating students, congratulations. I have heard from dozens of universities and they have all adapted to this new system. They're moved all their services online virtually. The admissions officers are there for you to contact and they will continue assisting you with the questions you have. I do want to point out to you, just as Interim Vice President Wilson spoke about, Curry State is super affordable. Even if you have graduated, there are some schools that will let you take additional classes with us after your associate's degree. You want to be in contact with them to make sure you don't exceed the maximum number of credits that they will. They can accept and apply towards your degree, but Governor State takes 75 credits from Prairie State for any of their majors. Olivet Nazarene, we have more than 90 Prairie State students that were there this last year. They take 82 credits from Prairie State, and we are a steal in the cost compared to these schools. If you get stuck, at, but in general, if you get stuck in the process of planning for or actually doing your transfer right now, contact me. I will help you. My email, I'll probably say it more than once, I'll say it now, is shein at prairiestate.com. Dot edu. 
Um, in that April email, you're going to have links to a, a lot of YouTube videos. I recorded a series of YouTube videos on the most common questions that I get and the ones that are more simple to address. So check those out. They help a large majority of students. Uh, graduating students, you'll be especially interested. There's one on applying to universities and it includes a section on how to get an application fee waiver. Continuing students, I have a whole host of resources for you. You can get to a lot of this information on Prairie State's website. If you go to our A to Z index in the top right corner of the webpage, choose trans, choose, after you choose A to Z, go to transfer students and you can get to the series of web pages of resources I have for you. The smoothest, easiest, less, least stress, stressful transfers happen for those who plan early and use these resources. Start as early as you can, as early as your first semester at Prairie State, if you can. So for this last couple of minutes, I'm just going to do a quick overview of some of these really awesome Shining Star programs we're part of. If you want to go to UIC and you have a 3.0 or higher, you can join a transfer admission guarantee program where UIC will guarantee your future transfer into most majors they have, and they will offer you additional advising support while you finish out everything here at Prairie State. I have a video on it. I have links to the website. It's all ready for you. If you're thinking about going on for a doctorate in pharmacy, we have an agreement with, with Midwestern University where this is specific to Prairie State freshmen. The deadline is June 6, so move quickly if you're interested in it. If you apply to and are accepted to this program, they're guaranteeing a spot for you in their doctorate program two years from now. You actually get to take all your requirements at Prairie State, skip the bachelor's, and go straight into a three-year doctorate. When you graduate, the average starting salary is over $100,000. The next four programs I'm going to talk about do these things where you get early admissions guarantee, you get extra advising support from the universities, but they take it one level better. They also give you more scholarship money, or you get lower tuition. Uh, we have a brand new program, and I have to thank Vice President Anthony. He was part of the meetings and the follow-up to make it happen. St. Xavier University, which is in the southern edge of Chicago, just a few miles north and west of Prairie State, has created a brand new program. They only have it with Prairie State. With this program, if you join at least a year before you plan to transfer to Prairie State, you will get an extra scholarship from them if you decide to go there. If uh, you are in this program uh, starting next year, people that are graduating next spring and later, you will get a chance to compete for a full tuition scholarship um, at St. Xavier through joining this early advising program. You're going to get more. They'll have someone come to campus and they'll have uh, give you additional advising support. Um, so definitely check it out. Also in that email I keep mentioning. GSU has a dual degree program and they do it on a larger scale and we've been doing this program with them for 10 years. You get to freeze your tuition early. If you're a freshman right now and you've got another year with Prairie State, then you can lock in this year's tuition rate, skip their tuition hike next year, skip their tuition hike the year after, and pay this year's rate a year and a half from now. The average student saves about uh, sorry, $2,000 in um, lower tuition costs. We have also had students earn full tuition scholarships through this program, because you can compete for those through this program. 59 Prairie State students have gotten full tuition scholarships through this program over the years. I'm going to stop there. I could talk forever, uh, but those are some of my favorites. Go ahead, check out the email and follow up with me if you have any questions or need it sent to you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. That was awesome. Uh, for our next panelist, um, we will have uh, Dr. Who I like to call Dr. D2L. Uh, Dr. Coslow, are you on the call and ready to give us a little information about D2L and uh, some other technology matters? Okay. All right. So my name is Tony Coslow, or I may see Antonia Coslow. I am the manager of online learning and the D2L administrator at the school. Um, students use the same login for D2L, email, and web advisor. Uh, you can contact Help Desk for help with your login because they can uh, help you with resetting the password. Students have 24-7 uh, 
365 help directly from D2L. So students can click on the image on the D2L homepage to get immediate help. You can get chat support or you can receive help via email. In addition to the 24-7 directly from D2L, students can contact me. Once in a while, I do uh, hear from students and it's, it's great. Um, sometimes it's something that um, I will reach out to the faculty with regard to in the course. And, uh, but it's always good to hear from students. So please do not hesitate to contact me. I have scheduled um, Google Meet meetings and met one-on-one -on -one with students because I am here to help you. Uh, your success is very important to me and very important to Prairie State. So please do not hesitate to contact me if you cannot get the help that you need. Um, we also have resources posted. There is a short video that I created on the D2L homepage. Please take advantage of that and listen to the video. The video explains how to navigate D12 and use some of the tools. I am going to be putting more resources for students on the announcement page in D2L. Um, there are also, it, there's also information and handouts on the student D2L website. So there's information, for example, with regard to Microsoft Office, if you use that software and um, there's also information with regard to Google. So if you use Google Docs, how do you take that file and um, submit it through D2L as an assignment? So um, I, I'm always good, glad to hear from students. So please don't hesitate to contact me if there's any, if you have any concern with regard to D2L or, or something, or if you need help. Um, we do have resources available to students and I will add more um, resources for you. So um, please visit the um, Student D12 website for information, not only D12, but technology, and um, make sure that you get the help that you need through directly through D12 on the homepage. Uh, click on the image on the right side of the page, or um, you can also contact me because I'm here to help you in any way that I can. So thank you for your time and um, just keep in mind, we're all here for you and we're here to, to help you become successful in your completing your courses. Thank you, I think that's it then. Thank you so much, thank you so much, Doc. Um, so let's move into talking to some of our faculty members. We have two, I think at least two of our talented faculty members on the line. And, um, um, hear from them uh, words of encouragement, but also classroom strategies and other information that they want to share with you all. So I'll turn it over to our faculty. Hi, um, I'm Erica Lannon. I teach biology at Prairie State. Um, and I just want to encourage all students that if you are struggling with any of your classes, to please just reach out to your faculty member who's teaching the class. Um, send us an email. Um, that's probably the best way to reach out. Um, there might be discussion forums or other ways to reach out. Um, but that's generally a, a, a good first step, right? Reach out to your faculty member. Um, and when you're emailing, please <laughs> include your full name and section number if you can. I can't tell you how many emails I've gotten. And I'm like, I have no idea who this is because they're not using their Prairie State email. And it's just like from Crazy Girl 29 at Hotmail. And I'm like, I don't know who you are. I'm hot. So, so please, if you include that, that would be really helpful for us. Um, a lot of faculty members are doing uh, recordings, either like a live stream that they are then um, making available for students later through a recording. Others are just recording their videos um, and, and making them available for students um, when they want to, to be able to access them. And in terms of the sciences, um, we're investigating a combination for the labs, um, a combination of like a lab kit that the students would purchase, um, as well as some virtual labs, as well as some labs that you might be able to do with household ingredients. Um, there's a few, labs, especially in biology, right? There might be things in your backyard, you go collect a plant or, or, or things like that. So um, yeah, we're looking at a combination um, of things to, to continue on. But yeah, contact your faculty member. <laughs> Thank you.
Uh, hi, I'm Joshua Green. I'm uh, the uh, an associate professor of communication and department chair of humanities, communication, world languages, fine arts. And I'm speaking to you all uh, to kind of give you some uh, rules of the road and how we navigate through this uh, global pandemic. And I want to stress that because uh, we're in a stressful period and we are all working together to ensure student success. Um, so there are three core concepts that describe how it is that we as faculty support students at the college. The first core concept is staying the course and keeping the end in mind. The ultimate goal is student success and completion. And we as faculty are working to transition our courses and lesson plans to the D2L platform, utilizing virtual classroom, Google Hangouts, and other virtual meeting applications that are at our disposal. And we are utilizing the, the technology within D2L to remain open and adaptive given our circumstances while we maintain academic standards. Within that adaptation, faculty is working to ensure that course materials meet the requirements of the governing bodies uh, as they pertain to completion, accessibility, and transferability. So there are a lot of moving pieces here, which brings me to my second core concept. The faculty are working collaboratively across the college and with other departments. One of the ways that faculty support students is that we make them aware of all the resources that are available to them at Prairie State. Sarah Hines, Shannon Word, know that I do this. Why am I going black here? What's going on? What's happening? We can still see you. I can still see you, Josh. And I can still hear you. All right. I'll keep going even though I can't see you all. All right. Uh, so Sarah Hines and, and Shannon Word know that I do this face to face and it's also covered in my syllabus. Uh, that I make them aware of all the resources. And these two are splendid resources and really help to keep the students on track and to keep the end in mind. In a moment, you'll hear from Deb Havinghurst, Executive Director of PSC Foundation, which provides resources like books and technology to the students. There are a lot of departments, a lot of systems within Prairie State, Disability Services, TRIO and ECI coordinators, all of us are working collaboratively to implement ways to create pathways for students. Each of these departments represent a system, which brings me to my last point. Students and faculty can develop systems of communication unique to the circumstance. Many of us, many of you can usually find this communication system within the instructor's philosophy. I like to tell my students in my philosophy that it's not just my classroom, it's our classroom. It's kind of giving me the idea that I'm open to whatever they need, all right? Uh, when we create and catalog and reflect on our experiences, we can learn and create systems that better equip us for new situations. So that another situation that comes up is just another one of those. If, if you are in an online learning environment and it's new to you, and you're wondering how it is that your professor will handle the virtual classroom, the best advice I can give you is to ask your professor. I've already had a student in my, summer in my summer course contact me about my policies. The key to success in higher ed is to read the syllabus, read the assignments, and talk to your professor. That student demonstrated to me that they are taking ownership of their education by contacting me and understanding the rules of the road. So to reflect, on the core concepts considering how it is that faculty support students adapting and staying and staying the course working collaboratively and utilizing resources and remaining open to developing systems of communication towards student success and with that i yield the rest of my time <laughs> thank you so much to both of you you are both excellent i appreciate that and that was i think crazy girl 29 was probably me i'm sorry that was i should have put my name on that um but i will do better next time uh good good advice uh for our students good advice great advice prescriptive advice uh communicate 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 with your very important um so let now let's move into uh beth uh, wyatt beth is our manager of recruitment and outreach but also oversees our advising center right now and she's going to share some information and and tips and answer some questions regarding academic advising, which is very important as you all think about uh, now and into the future. Thank you. 
Um, I want to echo what um, Professor Lannon and Professor Green said. Um, we are all working collaboratively to help the students out. Um, you know, we reach out to faculty when need be, they reach out to us. Um, but what I want everyone to understand is that um, we are still registering for summer classes. Um, you can register now for fall as well. Um, the advisors are ready, willing and able to help you out any way they can. Um, we are doing um, online uh, emails. We will contact you via phone. We will contact you via video call. Um, however is the best way for us to reach out to you, we will do that. Um, all you need to do is send an email to advising at prairiestate.edu and myself or one of the other advisors will get back to you. Um, we will help you um, answer any questions you have about what summer or fall classes uh, you need to take. Um, since summer is available now all online, um, there have been some questions about what classes are available online. Um, pretty much every class that we were offering face-to-face -face has been transitioned to an online format. Um, there are some courses that unfortunately we weren't able to do that with, um, like our CNA courses and our EMT courses and some other courses that require some uh, clinical hours that right now, um, because of the pandemic, we are not um, able to, to offer, but we're hoping to offer those again in the fall. Um, we will help students um, if they have any questions about um, their spring courses. Right now we're getting a lot of questions and concerns um, about how to complete the spring semester, or um, unfortunately we are getting a lot of students who are contacting us because themselves or their family have um, contacted COVID-19. So we're working through helping those students out um, addressing their issues with that as well. Um, if we have a lot of students who want to know what classes they need to take to graduate, we um, are easily equipped with helping you with that. We could send you um, an evaluation letting you know what classes you still need to take to graduate, um, how to help you fill out the graduation petition. Um, if you want us to put together a degree plan for you, we will help you with that too. Um, all the services that we are offering on campus, we are still offering online and we are more than happy and willing to help you out any way that we possibly can. Um, another question we get a lot is guest students. Um, a guest student is someone who comes from another university who is just here for the summer. Um, and we encourage that. Um, if you're a student at Prairie State now and you're planning to transfer, please come back for the summer. Or if you are um, a graduating senior who's looking to maybe go somewhere in the fall, um, please, you know, take your summer classes. We offer the same courses you could take at a university. Um, we are just more affordable. We're closer to home so you could work while you're going to school. Um, but a guest student um, really is someone who just wants to come and complete some courses. They've gotten approval from their university already. Um, so you know what classes you need to take with us. And the process is very simple. Um, we don't need to check to make sure you meet the prerequisite for those courses. Um, if you tell us you are a guest student, we will allow you to register for whatever courses you need to take. Um, the advising office will help you uh, walk you through the steps on how to do that. Um, but our number one thing is we want to make sure that the classes you are taking will transfer back. So that's the one question that we have. Um, placement testing and transcripts will not be needed. Um, we will just near, uh, merely need you to tell us what classes you want to take um, and we will help you with that process. Other than that, you know, we're, we're working on um, how fall is going to look. Um, so if you have any questions about that, um, we are very transparent and honest with you uh, right now. You know, you've heard other panelists talk about how we're looking at what we're going to do for that. And um, when things happen or change, uh, the advisors are aware of that. So we will help students out the best we can. Um, I know the advisors are anxious to get back on campus to see the students. Um, you know, they, they really like to see all your guys' faces. Um, they, they appreciate you. So, uh, you know, just reach out to us. Again, we're at advising at prairiestate.edu. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Beth. Um, so let's move in. We talked a little bit, Beth mentioned a little bit about placement and testing. And you may be thinking, what, what is that all about? And what if I'm going to be a student and I need to take certain course testing uh, to, to get particular courses? So we have Lisa Hansen on the call as well to talk a little bit about what that process looks like during the pandemic. Hi, welcome everyone. Lisa Hansen, Manager, Student Success Center and Testing. 
Um, welcome to new students, prospective students, and our current students. Let me talk first about some new students. Some of you may need to take some placement tests so we get you into the right courses. What we'll have you do is talk to advising first, like Beth said, advising at prairiestate.edu. You will talk to an advisor. They will go over what you have so far. Maybe you have some uh, test scores or grades that will get you into college level courses. If so, you won't need to take any placement tests. If they determine that you do need some placement testing, either in English or in math, they will let me know and we'll give you the information for that. Uh, we are working virtually. We're taking virtual placement tests with the English reading portion. We send you the packet. You read the packet over. The directions are nice and clear in there. You uh, write your summary paragraph and your essay paragraph. Send it back to me. I send it out to a couple readers for evaluation for placement. They get back to me and I put that onto your record, let your advisor know, let you know, and then you get to register for English reading classes, anything that has an English reading um, prerequisite requirement. For math, we are offering our Alex math placement testing assessment um, online. You can now take up to four proctored tests or unproctored tests at home, and you can use those to register for classes. We are reserving the fifth test to be a proctor test. So what will happen, um, our Alex math assessment program is a $15 program through um, McGraw Hill. You'll pay that $15 that allows you those four proctored exams or four unproctored exams and one proctored exam. Um, it'll also allow you six months access to learning modules. Once you take your first assessment, You'll get a score and it'll show you what class you would place into. From there, you can work in those learning modules to increase your score and increase your placement. You can use any of those first four um, assessments that you take at home to register for a class. Once you get into the class, if your instructor questions your abilities, we may be asking you, hopefully if we're back on campus, to take a proctor test just to confirm that you are placed properly. So when you do take that test at home, don't look up any answers, don't ask anyone for help, don't use a handheld calculator, uh, pretend you're in a proctored environment and do the best you can that way. Um, hopefully everything will be, um, easy enough for you to move along and get you into those um, college level courses, get you through those courses. Other testing, um, we're hoping to get back into, into the college, into the building to work on, we're working on the schedule for HESI testing for our incoming nursing students. We're hoping to be back into the college on the first two weeks of June. We're setting a schedule for that. I know many of you are interested in taking some CLEP tests, uh, CNA tests, Pearson VIEW tests, Constitution tests, uh, GDD tests, um, PSI innovative exams, and um, some proctor tests. So we're hoping we can get back into the building soon. Um, we will maintain social distancing, make everybody wear a mask, and do small groups to try to get some testing done. Those of you that are current students and trying to get through this semester, those that are uh, taking summer classes and are taking fall classes, please remember we do have tutors, free tutoring available. We have tutors that are helping while we're working on a virtual campus. They are working from home, uh, video chats, phone calls, whatever works best for you, they're here for you. So if you need any help with that, contact me, A. Hansen at prairiestate.edu. If you have any other questions, um, please email me and we will get you through this very different semester than, we're, than we've normally had. And we're looking forward to getting back on campus. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa. Appreciate you so much. Um, so last but not least, certainly last but not least, uh, is Deb Hapacourse, our Executive Director for Advancement and the, the Collaboration. Um, so so Deb, a little bit more about um, the very important support that, that the foundation can provide financially, but other ways as well. So Deb, you're on a call, we'll love to hear from you. Wonderful, hi everybody. Um, it's great to be seen, I should say. Can you hear me? Okay, um, it's great to be seen. Yeah, we can. 
you and C. Okay, great. Uh, and heard. So um, I'm Deb Habakorst. I'm the Executive Director of Institutional Advancement and the Foundation. Right now, we are busy, one, um, accepting and reviewing scholarship applications for the summer semester. So just like uh, our students have done in the past, we have our scholarship application open for summer. Um, anyone needing assistance with tuition or books for the summer semester, please complete an application. That's on the Prairie State homepage. You can scroll down and see an area on scholarships. Go ahead and click there and follow the directions. Um, you can, if you have any questions at all, you can email us at pscfoundation at prairiestate.edu. That will contact uh, me and my staff, Kathy and Susan, and we will be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. At the same time, we're also responding to students who have special needs uh, that are brought upon by our current COVID-19 pandemic situation. Any kind of emergency assistance you might need, please let us know what it is. We will do everything we can to help you. Um, like we tell the students all the time, if you have questions and you don't know who to ask, get in touch with us and we'll put you in touch with the right person. I think that is really it as far as overall. Make sure you fill out your summer application as soon as possible and um, let us know if there's anything else you need help with. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Deb said something very important. Uh, she said, if you don't know, ask. You never have to frustrate yourself trying to figure out who to, who to call. What There's a lot of information out there. We know that. Um, but if you ever just fall short, just sit, there's tons of people you contact. We don't mind. You, you, you don't get to the wrong person, whether it's a faculty member or somebody else. We'll try to get the information to you. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more tomorrow as we start to bring this one to a close. We'll talk about the CARES Act. Uh, Deb has been helping with that committee, the CARES Committee. Some of you know there's been federal funds released to uh, colleges to help students with emergency needs. And that's that's housing needs and rent, uh, child care, other kind of costs and expenses that you may have. Uh, that process, application process, is open for students. So if you go to the website and you click on the PSC, you know the banner up at the top, you'll notice that there's a, a CARES Act tab, and it has facts there for you and also a quick application. There are restrictions to who, by the federal government, not by Prairie State, that who can get those funds. You don't have to think through that. If you think you qualify, apply, and we will communicate with you very shortly. And we're trying to get that money dispersed to you as quick as possible. You want more information about that, be sure to tune in tomorrow for our, our second um, virtual town hall. Ooh, um, financial aid and some of those pieces. So let me say, as I, as I close, I want to share a bit more information with you all. Um, let me first say thank you for joining us. Thank you to the panelists. Um, you all are, are really excellent. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you all one more time and make sure I do it right this time. And y'all can tell me if it actually comes up properly. Give it a minute. Okay. And it is presenting. I assume you all can see that. All right. So um, you're almost there. I want to say that you are almost there uh, or um, you're almost ready to start and eat wherever you are. We have your back and we want you to feel supported as we're doing this. We want you to start off strong or finish strong, depending on where you are. Um, stay informed. So remember, check your PSE email. There are certain habits. Professor Green talked about this. There are certain habits that students do across the country, grad school, undergrad, community college, four year. Check your email. You do that as you're an employee in your in your job as well. Regularly check your PSC email. OK, make that a habit daily. Make it a habit also to check in with the COVID page uh, 19 page that's linked from the top banner of prairiestate.edu. There's tons of information there and you want to just check in on that regularly. OK, um, we will uh, as the uh, VP. Um, VP Wilson said uh, there are surveys that are out right now for you all to take. Um, there's a COVID-19 impact student impact survey. We have received uh, a little over 100, I think, at this point, uh, applicate uh, responses back for that survey. Please continue to fill that survey out. Uh, graduating seniors will receive a survey as well. So uh, take the time out, carve time out when you have a few minutes. To provide that feedback it is very, very important for us. Um, you're going to see these recordings also that will also show up on your um, 
the COVID page as well, the resources page. So you'll be able to access these recordings, this one and tomorrow's. Uh, at, uh, by the end of this week or early next week, we'll have those up for you to access um, and be able to see. So um, we want you to join us. Uh, oh, last thing, make sure to stay informed by emailing stayinformed at prairiestate.edu for any questions. So if you don't know who to go to, go there. That's fine. But there are other uh, email addresses and resources that you heard about today that you can find on the website. Tomorrow, I want to invite you to join us as we talk more about the registration process, financial aid, uh, and employment as well. There are resources the college are providing you in all of these areas, and we want to make sure you're there uh, to, to listen to what that is. And we'll answer questions that were submitted um, yesterday uh, before before today's uh, session. Uh, if you have other questions you want to ask that you did not hear the answer to today, you stay informed at prairiestate.edu. Again, stay informed at prairiestate.edu. Fire off a few questions there, and we'll make sure to include them and get them answered tomorrow. Um, and if they're not answered tomorrow, we'll answer them the next day. We'll make sure to get your questions answered. So as we close, thank you again uh, for being a part. Uh, and we will definitely see you uh, tomorrow, hopefully. So until then, thank you again to the panelists. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, and you all have a wonderful and safe day.